Okay. Uh, th thanks very much, Sanjay, and uh, thank you to Jan. I wonder if I could get Jan to come back on as well and, and ask Sanjay to, to stay with us. Um, and I, I've got a couple of questions um, which I guess uh, relate um, to the question that I asked the speakers in the last panel, which is about um, w what you see as the specific research priorities in relation to um, e each of the quite different um, you know, spaces in which you're undertaking work, given that part of what we're trying to do today is to kind of connect researchers with um, people that work uh, in much more connected kind of policy and practice uh, contexts. Um, where do you each see the kind of the pieces of research that you need um, that would help you do your job better? Jan? Yep. Um... Well, I think you know some some aspects I really touched on uh, quickly during the presentation. I think one is to, to better understand how we can engage uh, the communities uh, with their heritage and use that to um, to talk about climate change. I mean, um, there are um, different methodologies, and we we really need to find the right tools to to be efficient. Um, and engages the community, so that's one aspect. There is another aspect, uh, more practical on on what's working and what's not working in terms of um, adaptation and mitigation in relation to a heritage, and how far we can go um, without losing the significance of our heritage. That's a difficult balance, and I think um, that would be really useful. And as I said, I think. Um, the pilot projects are a, a very good opportunity to, to, to gain a lot of time and, and have a lot of impact uh, as a result of the research because it brings together um, practitioners and, and academics on a specific subject. And then we can test things on the ground and, and learn from it uh, very quickly and, and see if it's working or whether it's not working, whether it's replicable. So I think uh, translating um, uh, uh, the theory into practice and check whether it's working or not in a specific context is really important. Yeah. Okay, and Sanjay? Yeah, I think um, to answer your question about what research can do, I think I think the key when working, especially with um, communities, is that a lot of communities feel that the research is gets to a point and then it's research for research sake. There needs to be definitive actions, and actually, that partnership working is key, because a lot of the time, there's a lot of communities out there, especially if you're thinking of the UK. There's a lot of um, communities who are in deprived areas who always feel that there's an imbalance that the research done is done for an area that has no relevance or significance to what they're experiencing, and then it's kind of tacked on on top of them. And I think. The other thing about the research is sometimes is that research talks in a lot of papers I read about recommendations about steps forward, always initiate um, pilot studies and a lot of time engagement is it's a sliding scale you, when you're engaging or working with communities, it can take years, it can take um, ups and downs. And I think the problem is, is that if you can't establish that relationship with communities and keep it strong, research kind of falls down then because it, it all becomes well, what's the next project we need to justify to do the next research. So I think just speaking from a flooded community sense is it's that kind of longevity and partnership working as I mentioned in the presentation. Okay that's very helpful and then um, just one which I think slightly reframes one of the questions that we had from the um, audience is if, uh, if we think about community knowledge and uh, as, as its own form of expertise, um, which is useful and in some ways potentially more useful than uh, academic research and other forms of expertise. How is that community knowledge um, collated and collected and stored? And how is it then subsequently fed into um, policy and practice uh, in in the context in which you're working, and and do you have any ideas about how how this could happen if it's not already happening? Um, yes, I've, I kind of overran with my presentation there, but I had a slide um, in relation to a local um, 
a flood action group who looked at this possibility of partnership working with the local authorities. So they created a, essentially they were given a big pot of money to go away and protect their homes with um, property flood resilience. But they decided, well, actually, with our local knowledge, with the expertise of flood risk management authorities, we need a more holistic approach. So they actually created a benefit mapping exercise where they got together and they realised, well, actually, this isn't this is the tip of the spear, so to speak. We really need to delve into what each each authority does and how we all link in and what does that map mapping that out shows what we work together in and how we can move things forward collectively. So I think that voice of the community is really needed to gel that together, so to speak, because especially in UK um, infrastructure in relation to flood risk, it's different organisations have different responsibilities and for someone in the community, that's very difficult to understand. Um, it might be easy when you're pulling research together, as I've done when I did research projects too, it's easy to then have an overarching view but for people in the community, that's very difficult. Jan, do you have a, a reflection on this? Yes, uh, well, it's very much what we're trying to do with um, uh, our climate change risk assessment of the world related sites, precisely trying to capture um, uh, the ports and uh, the understanding of the, the climate change and its impact on the world heritage site through the lens of the local community. So it's very really much about um, um, having an evidence-based approach uh, and also um, uh, having the assumptions that we, uh, any uh, organization is, is able to, to, to completely understand what's going on on the ground. Uh, even such a small area, such as the World Heritage Site, we've got very different um, profiles of the neighbourhoods, so we may have different um, challenges. And if we want to propose the right solutions um, that then could address these problems, then we need to, to engage widely with a wide range of, of people and stakeholders to understand, to, to co correctly understand the, the problems and map them out, and then we can we can inform uh, relevant proposals to address this issue. So it's really much about acknowledging that you know not not only one one actor or one group of people you know have the the, the, the solution, but we all need to well we need to to engage widely to make sure we've got a good understanding of the situation, and then we we can propose the relevant um, approach that then will address um, the residents and the community's problems locally. Okay, thank you very much. I think we're out of time now. Um, we'll just have a very brief three-minute break, and then we'll start again at uh, at 12:25. And I'm going to pass the uh, chairing to uh, Hannah Morell, um, who will introduce uh, Hannah Fluck. Okay. <laughs> 